Hi everyone. Uh, in this video I wanted to do a book review and the, the book I'm reviewing is uh, Volume 3 of the Learn to Play Go series. Um, volume 3, the title is The Dragon Style. Um, I've already talked about Volumes 1 and 2 in the Learn to Play Go series and um, uh, and I, I recommend them wholeheartedly. I think uh, Volumes 1 and 2 provide an excellent introduction to the game. They give you uh, you know, the basics of the game. They, they teach you some of the, the, the tactics uh, uh, tactics of attack and defense, the basic techniques, and uh, are enough to really get you up and running and playing the game. I think Volume 3 is uh, an attempt to uh, take your game to the next level and to try and uh, give you a different perspective on the game than just that uh, kind of simple move-by-move -move, uh, perspective that uh, the beginner has when he's looking at the game. Uh, and so it's kind of an interesting book, and so I wanted to describe it in some detail to see so that uh, you could hopefully get an idea of what the contents of the book are and uh, make up your own mind as to whether this is something that uh, you would like to have. Um, so the book itself is divided into three parts. So let's start with uh, part one. Part one consists of, uh, well, I guess it's advice, really, um, a series of uh, statements or sayings that uh, provide advice to the player. The, uh, kind of giving you an orientation, things to think about as you're playing the game. Um, the first section, part part one, is uh, divided into two sections. The seven dangers and the eight secrets is what they're called. So the seven dangers comes first. And um, what she's talking about here, the, the author is uh, Janice Kim, is um, things like uh, blunders. You know, why is it that uh, people blunder? How do you avoid making blunders? Um, the overplay, what's, what is an overplay, what's wrong with an overplay, um, and, um, and also something called playing on tilt, which actually is, is something I've seen and experienced myself, which is sometimes you get upset about the, the course of the game and you just start uh, moving too fast or just responding instantly when you really should uh, be pausing and, and thinking before you move. So the seven dangers are uh, things to watch out for when you play the game. And then it's followed by a section called the eight secrets. And the eight secrets are positive things that you should look for and things that you should do as you play the game. And um, they're sort of like Go Proverbs. I think maybe some of them are Go Proverbs, but they're, they're different. And uh, I had one example here. This is, uh, I think this is the first one on the list. Um, yeah, so before I give you the, uh, the, the saying, uh, let's take a look at this example. It's White's turn to move here. And uh, there's two different ways that you have a choice of two different places to move. You could play here at A, or you could play here at B. And um, so what's the uh, trade-off between these moves? Um, if you play at A, what you're doing is you're, you're killing these three stones. They can't escape. So A definitely will net you those three stones. If you're playing at uh, B, then uh, black can play at A and save those stones, but you are... Um, gaining territory up here and you're also taking territory away from these stones otherwise if you play at A for example black could play at B so so that's probably the best way to think about it is uh, you know if you play here black is going to play there if you play here at B then black is going to play here and which of those situations would you rather have so why don't you uh, think about that for a while pause the video if you want some time and then I will uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to start discussing the suggestion now. So this is the, the eight secrets. This is secret number one, and the, the title is Choose Profit Over Glory. And uh, so what this means is that, uh, the, you know, kind of the natural instinct is to just come over here and kill these stones. And that would be the, the glory hunter. You know, you're just out to kill. And uh, in, that, in this particular case, that's not the right move. The right move is actually playing over here at B. And you actually gain a lot more territory over here. If you think about this, this is maybe 12 points of territory. But uh, those points, I mean, this is a swing. If these points become your territory, that's 12 points you get. It's also 12 points that you took away from your opponent. I, I, I'm exaggerating by calling that 12 points. There's really only uh, 8 points underneath those stones. But, uh, but you're taking these points away from your opponent. So uh, it's a swing. You know, you get those points and they're also taken away from your opponent. So it's it's a big change. Whereas uh, this move here, 
well, it nets you those three stones and three points of territory, so it's only maybe worth six points. So if this nets you, say, eight points of territory and takes eight points away from your opponent, that's worth a total of uh, 16 points. That's, that's one way to think about these moves. So anyway, that's one of her sayings, is uh, choose profit over glory. And uh, her selection of sayings is kind of interesting. So let's see if we uh, back up here and uh, maybe play somewhere else. So let's uh, give an example of a go proverb. Uh, there's a go proverb that says never push from behind. So let's let's see if I can create an example of that. Say, uh, you know, black has a couple of uh, stones here, and uh, and you've got some stones here, and uh, and it's your turn, and you push here, and he extends, and you push, and he extends, and you push, and he extends. This is pushing from behind. You're you're on a lower uh, level here, and he's also one point ahead of you. So you're never ever you're never able to actually put a stone in front. He can always uh, drop down like that. Your opponent can, and uh, and if you keep pushing, he uh, he just keeps pushing like that. So there's a ghost saying that says, "Don't push from behind." But on the other hand, there are times when you want to push from behind. Like in this particular case, uh, you may want to push a few times here, 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 and then maybe uh, down here call it a day. But you want to push enough that uh, you get a group here that's stable and can live. So that's uh, kind of typical of Go sayings, that they are, uh, that they are, um, um, they, they have their, uh, have their place, but they're not always correct. So they're kind of uh, examples that are specific. You can follow them easily, uh, but, um, but you always have to be a little bit judicious. Let me give one more example. Uh, this is another ghost saying I always uh, liked. Uh, let's say, uh, say black has some some stones in a wall like this, and uh, and you place a stone here at uh, g5. This is called a peep. What you're doing is you're taking a look at this uh, break in the wall, and um, and so the the ghost saying is that uh, only a fool doesn't connect on a peep. So the automatic move is to play there. Um, and well, the thing about it is, um, if you listen to other players, uh, if you listen to stronger players who are uh, talking while they're, they're uh, playing Go, uh, some of the videos online on YouTube, they won't automatically connect there. I mean, sometimes they will, but sometimes they'll say, is that Sente? Uh, you know, sometimes they, they might find a better move, um, and they might have a way to respond, say if they play over here, you know, what you want to avoid is black breaking, white breaking through, but maybe it's okay. Maybe, uh, in fact, you already had some stones here. And so the fact that that uh, peep was breaking through this far, it doesn't go anywhere after that point. So it's not really helping. So it all depends on the circumstance. So the, the saying itself is very simple and straightforward, easy to remember and apply, but it's not always correct. So I was just giving those two examples um, because those are the kinds of things that are not in the book, right? The book, um, Janice tries to pick out some uh, expressions that are more uh, universal, I would say. But at the same time, they're a little bit uh, trickier to understand. So this uh, example of choose profit over glory is, is one of that. You know, there's some interpretation there, but it, it is perhaps uh, more often true than, uh, than some of these other sayings. So that is part one of the book. There's these uh, uh, little little fragments fragments of advice and examples. So she illustrates what she means in every case. And then part two is a series of uh, games. She shows three different games and um, walks through them uh, step by step. And I think uh, this part is is pretty interesting because she talks about the moves in a little more detail than you get in uh, some of these videos. She shows. Uh, some typical YouTube videos. She shows uh, examples of uh, different ways that the game might be played. Um, sometimes uh, she gives uh, positive examples of, of you know alternatives that, that were working, and, and also sometimes she explains moves that weren't played uh, because they didn't work. And I think that's pretty good. Um, it's it's hard to um, it's hard to answer everybody's questions, so there probably will still be points in the game where you might think, well, why didn't they play this or why didn't they play that? And there won't be an answer. You'll have to uh, think about it on your own because, you know, it's a long game and you can't, uh, can't uh, give a complete uh, answer for every 
move, but she does talk about every move a little bit. So there's a little bit about every moves and at critical points, there's uh, more explanation, including uh, alternatives that were considered and uh, passed on for various reasons. Um, or sometimes there are alternatives they, they didn't even consider and, and might have been uh, quite playable. Um, so I think that part is pretty good. And interspersed between these games are these little uh, sections of advice. For example, there's a, um, there's a section in one of the games uh, where she talks about how to improve, her advice for improving your Go. And uh, another little, um, they're sidebars basically, uh, little, little boxes of text uh, alongside the game. There's another uh, box which I thought was pretty interesting where she talks about thickness. She defines the concept of thickness and talks about how you use thickness. And then uh, finally, the last part is a self-test. So basically, um, she has a series of questions for you that you can score uh, yourself. Um, they're questions with answers, and the, the questions and the answers are on different pages. So you, you can read the questions, come up with your answer, and then you flip the page and, uh, and check and see what your uh, answer, whether it was right or not. And uh, if you keep score, she gives you a tally at the end. And um, so I did this. I, I read the whole book. And the way I, I read the book is I actually read it a couple of times um, because it's an easy read, but at the same time, uh, it's not clear. It's hard to say if you're really uh, getting everything out of the book that you can if you just read through it quickly. So I would read the book and then I would play some Go and then I would go back and, and read uh, that section again. So, for example, when I was reading over the Eight Secrets or the, uh, the Seven Dangers, you know, I, I would then try and try and keep those ideas in mind while I played some game, and then I'd go, um, then I'd go read that section again, and then play a little more. So I went through it very slowly, and then, um, and of course, I was still, in addition to reading the book, I was also, you know, solving puzzles and and watching videos on YouTube and playing. So you know, you have to kind of approach this uh, from all angles if you want to improve. And uh, and then I took the test, and so there were 25 questions. And I scored a total of uh, 16 right and 9 wrong. So they're not uh, easy questions, even if you take it slowly. And, uh, and then she has a score sheet, uh, or a, uh, yeah, she gives you scores at the end. So my uh, score fell into the range of uh, good. I got 64 points. Let's see, she has above 84 points. So that's uh, the, um, the, your score is the number you got right times 4. So I got 16 right, so my score was 64. Um, 84 points is excellent, so I wasn't in that category. Between 60 and 80 is good. Uh, 24 to 56 is average, so a little above average. Um, 15 to 20 needs work, and below 12, uh, you need to review this book before moving on to the next volume. So anyway, it, it gives you a way of ranking yourself and seeing uh, where you fit in that scale and if you're ready to move on. So I found that to be a, a useful feature as well. And I just wanted to give you one example of a, uh, a problem. And uh, let's see, yeah, here we are. Uh, it's White's turn to move. Okay, and so this was uh, problem four. I don't want to spoil it uh, too much, but I'm going to give away this one problem. If you want to save, uh, if you want to uh, <laughs> save it until you see the book, you can uh, skip, you can skip this section of the video. But uh, anyway, I'm going to discuss this problem and give the answer. And uh, this is a problem I got wrong. So I just wanted to talk about that. Um, so the uh, problem says, look at these three marked stones. It's White's turn to move. And uh, these three stones are in danger. And the question is, how do you save those stones? So that's the question she asks. And uh, if you want to pause the video here and see if you could come up with an answer for yourself, that would probably be uh, the, the way to get the most out of this. Okay, I'm going to start talking about it. Um, the first thing I thought of, actually, was to Atari here. And then when this stone comes out, um, then I can uh, connect. And uh, it looks like this stone is escaping. Um, but I wasn't entirely sure. Yeah, I think it is escaping. Um, so I, um, I stopped at this point. And I, I, I thought about it some more. I wanted to, uh, you know, take my time and uh, give it my best shot. Yeah, so it's in this position. So starting with this move with the Atari and then trying to save it that way. And another idea I said was, how about if you connect underneath? And uh, this is the answer I eventually decided on. Um, so I thought you could play like this. You connect under here 
Um, goes if uh, black goes like that, you connect here. Now black can't cut um, because uh, it looks like it's putting these stones in Atari, but you can play here and put that stone in Atari, and that will capture that stone, and this this group will live. And I don't think uh, you know maybe it's a little bit in danger. It might be a little bit dicey, but I think uh, the bigger problem is uh, this move. So black could play there and just cut these stones off that way, and then you have to. Um, do something like this. You try and save that stone and then black can capture it and then you can come out. You could even capture that stone or if, uh, or if uh, let's back up, if black saves that stone then you can come out this way and uh, or go up. Anyway, uh, it does save the stones but it uh, sacrifices a stone and it uh, and it leaves black with these uh, four stones here. I'm not sure if those are going to live, though. Maybe you can capture them. Anyway, a little bit of a murky situation. The correct answer was the simpler answer and the first one I thought of, which is to play the stone here. You Atari that stone, and then you connect. And then there's no way that uh, that uh, you can be captured. If, uh, if uh, black tries there, you can just come out and... Uh, and you're, you're escaping. You're not, you're not getting captured. So, um, and there's there's no ladder. Plus, you also have you know three liberties down here. So it's not not easily getting captured unless you run into some black stones there in the neighborhood. So that was the answer. And uh, and so the my my idea of connecting down here it probably uh, just doesn't work as well. And I, I haven't completely analyzed that. Uh, but that was as best I could tell. I thought maybe if you went here that this cut was going to be a little bit dangerous for you and you couldn't really connect underneath. Um, so that's uh, an example where um, the, uh, they, uh, she gave the problem and she gave the correct answer, but she didn't uh, explain why um, the answer that I came up with was wrong. You have to kind of figure that out for yourself. And there are cases where she'll explain why this, this doesn't work, but uh, she can't explain every possible wrong answer. So <laughs> that's kind of a limitation of the format. Uh, I'm not able to ask my question live. Um, and uh, so I thought that was one of the more complicated uh, problems, but uh, others were more straightforward. So they, they varied in difficulty. And those are the kinds of problems you might, you might see in the, uh, in the test section of the book. So overall, I uh, enjoyed this book a lot. I read it carefully. I, I thought it was, um, Maybe this, the, um, the test at the end was, was perhaps the best part because it just gives me an idea. You know, I, I, I have the ranking that I've achieved at the online Go server, but uh, yeah, it's just nice to get a, a test result and know that I'm, I'm coming along at an okay rate. I'm, I'm learning a, a fair amount. And then the other thing I did was I, I looked at all of the problems that I got wrong and I tried to see if I could find any patterns as to uh, what kind of mistakes I was making. And I did notice that there were a couple of times where um, I got the wrong answer because I didn't recognize a threat. There was a threat on the board and I just didn't see it or, or recognize it. Even though I was thinking about these and taking my time, um, yeah, I failed to see threats in a couple of cases. And there were a couple of cases like this one, which is sort of a, a misre misread. I'm just not finding the, the simplest way to play this. Um, so that uh, sums up the book. Yeah, so I, I, uh, I enjoyed this book. I think it was uh, useful for me, and I'm going to continue to uh, go through the series and uh, go on to volume four. And I may come back and revisit uh, some of those sayings from the earlier part of the book uh, from time to time. I think, uh, I think I still haven't got the full value out of the book. So I think there's, uh, I, I'm going to continue to have to come back and uh, take a look at... Uh, at her uh, eight secrets and seven dangers, and uh, and review them to see if I'm I'm achieving a decent understanding of them, um, but it gives me something to uh, to strive for. Um, okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll have the details about the book in the description below. See you later. Bye.